All right, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're gonna be giving you guys a little bit of a hurricane season update. I just wanna talk about the dust, the sea surface temperatures, and really when we can start to see some more activity starting up. For today's comment of the day, I wanna know which month of this hurricane season do you think is going to be the most active overall? Let me know in the comments down below, give me a reason why, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now, the first thing we need to talk about is the dust, the Saharan dust. Obviously, tropical systems do not like dry air. You know, it's dry dust. Dust is dry. So we need to talk about the Saharan dust here. And as you can see, this is actually for a frame, basically our, our most recent frame here. And as you can see, there's quite a bit there in the Gulf, the Caribbean. There's a little area in between Jamaica and then kind of uh, Puerto Rico there that has hardly any. It still has some. Uh, but then as you see, if you head east of there for the that's called our MDR in between the Caribbean and Africa. There is definitely a ton. And those yellows are even more potent amounts of it. You know, it's so potent there that it, there's likely visibility issues because of how much dust is in the air. Uh, the purple and pink might have a little bit of haziness, but likely not. Mostly just dryness to the air. But yeah, definitely those yellows and, and certainly the very bright yellows is where there is visibility issues. So that just shows you the sheer amount of dust that there is out there in some of those MDR regions. Now things do lighten up. This is 104 hours from last night. This is gonna be about 4 a.m. on Thursday, July 15th. As you can see, there is gonna be some pockets of areas and we see this you know, oftentimes through the hurricane season where there is little pockets where development could occur if there happens to be a system there. It doesn't appear like that will be the case this time, but you see there is some areas there uh, near the very, very Eastern Caribbean there and then even near the Gulf Coast of the United States. Those are some very small windows, however. South of Cuba, near the Yucatan Peninsula, there is another pocket of dust. And then still, for the MDR, certainly, especially right off the coast of Africa there, there is some very potent amounts of that dust still around. Now, at hour 75, this is going to be about, um, I would say, Tuesday evening there on July 13th. You can see there is some waves still trying to enter off of Africa in our MDR. We see all those reds showing up. This is our... Uh, cyclonic relative vorticity. Basically, this is just some very large scale rotation in the atmosphere. So things that spin, such as tropical cyclones, show up here. Also, there is some non-tropical, you know, low pressure systems that have some nice spin to them also showing up here, like the one of very far, we can see two actually near the middle of the, of the very far northern Atlantic there. Those are just some rotating storms that just are not tropical by any means. So those are examples of things that rotate that aren't tropical systems. But we do see that wave coming offshore of Africa. That actually ends up being nothing, as you can see by the time we're reaching Friday afternoon. I think that's mostly because of all of this dust that we have out there. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna move on and we're gonna move from Sunday, July 18th, the morning time. We're gonna move all the way to the end of the model run and see if we can get any of these tropical waves off of Africa to develop whatsoever. And then we're gonna move on and start talking about sea surface temperatures as well. All right, now here we are taking a look, and this is gonna be Sunday at about 4 a.m. on July 18th. And as you can see, this is our Saharan dust, and there's gonna be some bigger windows showing up actually by this point. We see the MDR still has some dust, and that is the very bright yellows, which is interesting. If there were some purples and blues, I could see how a tropical system could still develop. It's those yellows, and then especially those very bright whites almost, that there's just no chance of a storm trying to develop in there. We do see there's a nice window there, basically from the Gulf Coast all the way through the Caribbean, the entire Caribbean Gulf, I would say Gulf of Mexico and East Coast of the United States is pretty much clear of dust for the most part by this point. So this would be a window where I could see some tropical activity trying to take place because of the fact that things have really opened up here, but the MDR is totally engulfed with all of this dust. Now, by the time we are reaching about Tuesday afternoon or evening, that's going to be about 8 p.m. there on Tuesday, July 20th, we are moving very far into the outlook here. This could be a little bit different by the time we reach then, but basically all of that dust that was located in the MDR also moves towards the Caribbean again. So this is just going to be something that's moving like on kind of a cycle and as it moves into the MDR from Africa, it eventually makes its way into the Caribbean as well obviously less potent by that point. This time around though, there is some golds and oranges showing up, which means it's a, it is pretty potent there. Uh, maybe even some haziness and visibility issues like I mentioned before. 
Uh, and by the time we're reaching hours 192, this is our cyclonic vorticity again. We can see there is still some more waves coming offshore of Africa, but this one, uh, by the time we reach a couple of days later, does end up trying to develop according to the European model. And the important thing here isn't that this shows this specific storm because this is 240 hours out. I can almost guarantee you this specific storm on this specific date isn't going to happen. The important thing here is that the European model thinks that the environmental conditions will be sufficient for tropical development. So it might not be this storm, but this means that there will be... Uh, it'll be suitable for tropical systems to develop because it has this one developing. So that's the biggest takeaway there. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the probability of tropical depression and just see if the, if the probability European model has anything showing up as far as tropical systems. And then we're going to take a look at some sea surface temperatures as well. I'm going to close out the video. All right, now here we are taking a look here. And, and this is going to be approximately days 0 through 3 or Sunday, July 11th through Wednesday, July 14th. And as you can see, there is some little purple areas indicating 10 to 20% chance of tropical development. But this model does some wacky things, and I really don't think any of these will develop, especially not the one located over Lake Erie right there. If you notice that, again, this is a wacky model sometimes. Uh, and then by the time we are reaching day 7 through 10, it's kind of the same story. There is a few purple areas, but really it doesn't have much developing. Sometimes this model's a little late to the game, though. It doesn't really, like, find tropical systems, like, far out and then ends up being right, and it's, like, an outlier. It doesn't usually act that way. Usually it's more of a follower, so we'll see other signs that there could be some tropical development, and then this one hops on board. It's mostly useful for seeing if a storm will become a tropical storm or a hurricane. It is good at uh, predicting that in intensity oftentimes, and sometimes in the short range, it can find a tropical system, like, offshore of the East Coast before even the National Hurricane Center has it. So this model does have some value. Now moving on to the sea surface temperatures. This is interesting because our ENSO region are down there where the El Nino would form. That's basically offshore of Central America and a little bit of Northern South America. It is cooling a little bit there in the regions, especially the regions that matter the most there. So we are seeing this become more towards the La Nina side or heading in that direction. The Atlantic is cool quite a bit, and I think that's mostly due to Elsa moving through. Usually when we see these tropical systems move through, it does cool the waters quite a bit. And as you can see, the Caribbean, the Gulf states, the East Coast, and the MDR are all below normal sea surface temperatures. This is good news because this could, for the meantime, hinder some tropical activity from occurring. The middle of the Atlantic and the northern Atlantic does have some warmer than normal sea surface temperatures. And moving towards the fall and winter, this is actually good news for cold and snow lovers because this is a classic negative NAO pattern. And those colder waters, if they will continue near the East Coast and the Gulf Coast, will help temperatures just uh, get colder near the coast uh, as those cold, basically as cold air masses move through. Sometimes the warmer waters can keep the air temperature surrounding that region a little bit warmer. But if they're already below normal, it'll just help everything cool down quicker. Not that this video is even about the winter. Let's take a zoomed in look at the North Atlantic real quickly. And as you can see, again, the East Coast, the Gulf Coast, and then the, the Caribbean and the MDR are all below normal sea surface temperatures. But south of Greenland, we do have those warmer than normal sea surface temperatures. And then also east and north of Bermuda as well, which is kind of, again, just that classic negative NAO pattern showing up here. Anyway, for today's confidence tab we're at a three out of six today obviously we talked about some things that are closer to about hours 240 which is exactly 10 days that's like the 10 day range there obviously 24 times 10 240 so for today's confidence tab we are at a three of three out of six because of the just longevity of the range we've been talking about today for today's comment of the day i asked you guys how would you rank this summer so far not that we're there very far into it we're almost at the halfway mark though believe it or not uh, the normal 2007-er said, I live in Texas and I rate it 9 out of 10. It's been raining a lot and it has been cooler than, than unusual. I think <laughs> this person meant to say usual. Cooler than unusual. Uh, that's an odd way of putting it, but I get what you mean. Uh, this one, I picked this one because it's kind of more of a positive outlook, giving it a 9 out of 10. I got a lot of people from the Pacific Northwest that are like ranking it like a 1 out of 10. And I'm like, man, I just really want <laughs> to pick a happy comment today. I also had a lot of people from the East Coast make, ranking it a 1 out of 10 for the opposite reason. They Because the Northwest are saying it's way too hot. Stop it. It's way too hot. And then the East are like, it's too cold and rainy. 
So if only we could just like flip, everybody would be happy. But obviously after like a week, they'd all be complaining again for opposite reasons. That's just how it works. For today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Lair LePan, and Donna Carnez, alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Falego, Garys, John Khaleesi, Dwight Phelan, and Steven Cronenthal. If you would like to be a part of this exciting patron end screen of the day, you can do so by joining our very awesome Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I would also like to thank our channel members, Hairfarms1 and Catbite as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button, leave a comment down below to help that YouTube algorithm out, and be sure to subscribe if you like weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.